right, we are right to the action. Ah! <laughs> and we are on an electric pit bike. Woo! Ah! <laughs> Riding some single track. I'm at a new location. I just found this place. Ah! I am on my lunch break right now, so you guys are coming along with me. And uh, whoa. Whew. Oh yeah, suspension is clutch. Whoa, oh, I almost sent that. It's all good. I just wasn't expecting it. Woo. Yeah, so the, the story behind this electric pit bike that I'm on, um, when I got the re-road, or actually when the re-road re -road was coming in, I told Jason at Fumoto, I said, hey, got this bike coming in. You're more than welcome to try it out. And so he was like, hey, I actually have this electric pit bike. You're more than welcome to try it out. And we swapped bikes. Now he's already given a review ah, on the reroad on his channel. I definitely encourage you to go Whew, let me catch a breath. Definitely go encourage you to check out that review. Very good information. He gave a completely different perspective. Of, well, not, I don't want to say completely different. There were some similarities. We both agreed that the uh, suspension was good. Um, he, he did like the, the immediate low end power, but didn't like that, you know, the high end torque because it, it, it lacks in that department. And I totally understand that. And so for his, his riding style of, of wanting more, it, it definitely, uh, was kind of underwhelming for him. And I, and I valued that, that feedback because for me, like I, I just do stuff like this, like light trails and, and wheelies, it's perfect and it, it, it's so smooth. But for him, you know, he likes something more like this that just has, s the power just keeps coming and coming and coming. Like it's torquey even at, I don't know, 30, 30 miles an hour, this thing just keeps picking up. And so I think that's important to have these perspectives because it's like okay if you're not like a, a street cruiser or, or even if you are but if you want something heavy on the torque side then you'll know that the the reroad isn't for you out of the box maybe you do need to throw on a, a, a bigger sprocket but if you want something similar to how the light bee feels and that smooth progressive throttle curve then maybe the reroad would be for you so definitely go check out his video appreciate you jason for taking out the reroad giving it a um unbiased review that's something i am so grateful for because i feel like it's so easy to be like oh everything's great and wonderful and and peaches and rainbows but it's not you know if you don't like something say it i'm not scared to say it i mean i i think i was a little bit critical of his uh VMX 12, whenever he let me ride it, I was like, oh man, this kind of feels like a Saturn. <laughs> but it was just me just, I wasn't trying to be mean. It was just me just saying how I felt. And, and I, I was really happy that he didn't get upset about that. You know, he was, he was happy to ah, <laughs> let me voice my opinion. And uh, so, you know, when he voices his, it's like, dude, I, I love this. And, but, but he let me try out the VMX 12 now. He also let me try out that awesome little scooter. And now he's let me try out this electric pit bike. This is my favorite bike. This is my favorite bike that he's let me try out. I told him, I said, dude, this is the best bike that you have. This is so much fun. You just come here and shred all this. Ah, the suspension's good. The power is nuts for a little bike. Eee. Ah. And don't worry, I'll get into the details of what this is. Whoa! A little step down. Oh my gosh, I wasn't ready for that. This is the Bomb Moto B1. Now, this bike, as I only did like half a second of research, is a, you can buy it from Bomb Moto, just the rolling chassis for like a thousand bucks, like $940, $950. You buy the rolling chassis and then you bring your own battery, your controller and your throttle install and you can rip around. I don't know what the total cost would be if you brought your own parts, but I think Jason said that this is a 72 volt. Little pit bike brakes are good. The suspension, 
surprisingly good for a pit bike. Um, it has a domino throttle on there. Well, obviously, Jason would have had to put this on himself, but I, I don't know. I, this is some of the most fun I've had in a while. One thing I was kind of sketched out about was, look at this little rinkety dink chain. This thing is a tiny chain. I think this is like a razor chain, but not only that, I, I think uh, there's been no maintenance on this thing. This thing is crunchy, could use some use some oil or some love. It's starting to rust up a little bit. But other than that, the Bomb Moto V1. Tons of fun. I think that this is a great bike for anyone of any age because you know that because it's a pit bike, it could fit all the kids and stuff like that. It has a 12 inch tire in the rear and then a 14 inch in the front. But as an adult, it hauls me around. Still gives me plenty of power. I got plenty of arm pump. And I do realize how lucky I am to spend my lunches doing shh like this. Ah! I try to be, uh, remind myself to be grateful that I'm able to work from home because if I had to go into an office, I wouldn't have enough time to like drive home, go get my bike, do all that stuff. But because I don't work in an office, I can just, you know, unload the bike, go for a quick spin. Yeah, nice and flowy. Let's go. Whoa, a little muddy, a little muddy. Hill climb, yes, easy, easy. Woo. What else can I tell you guys? What other updates? Whoa, a little jump. Um, another hill climb. I ordered, now that I know that the reroad is gonna be my primary bike, I started started ordering things for it, of course. So I have, uh, oh, that's a little, nice little jump. I got a ODI number plate and I bought my favorite pegs that I used to run on the Suron. So I think next week I'm gonna show those pegs. And uh, yeah, I think they're gonna be probably new for 99.9% .9 of the community because it was like a hidden secret that only me and like two other riders have really known about um, and for good reason because they're not necessarily Suron pegs but they do fit the Suron and, I, and I'll explain more in, in depth next week about those pegs but if you are sh if you are a street rider Oh man, these pegs are nice. Boop, 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 boop. Ah! <laughs> so just stay, stay tuned for that. I've been in Texas for not two years. No, it hasn't been two years, has it? Uh, almost two years? No, I, I don't know. I've been in Texas for a little bit of a time now. This place that I'm at right now, the best place that I've rode off road so far. Because in Houston, we have like one trail spot, but it's so packed. Like there's so many people that are there, so you can't really go there. They yell at you. There's Facebook groups, people reporting you. So it's just like, ah, that place, not, not the best. I haven't found any other good single track there. Uh, I mean, in California, when I lived there, there's tons everywhere, Texas, haven't seen them but now finding this place oh my god dude this is this is like a dream come true oh brakes are good i like this little pit bike suspension's good brakes are good power also great thing just keeps coming oh that's what she said this might actually surprise people but when i got my first turn on back in december of 2020 I actually never rode streets. And I know it, it, that might sound crazy because all you do is see me doing wheelies and, and stuff like that every single week. But this single track stuff's not new to me. Uh, when I first got my Suron, I joined a Facebook group uh, in, in SoCal to try to meet other Suron riders because I didn't know anyone with this bike. And the first group ride that I went on was like this off-road, place and ripped a bunch of trails and stuff like that and all the guys that I rode with all they did was dirt so for like the first I don't know seven eight months 
of my Suron experience, all I did was ride off road and uh, eventually like transitioned to the street stuff. But I always loved riding the trails and I, and I missed it. I moved out of California and it's like, oh, I don't do any more dirt anymore. But I used to do it all the time. And so this brings me back to that because I haven't had this out here. Oh man, woo, we're cruising now. Yeah, and I actually don't have like an MX background or any any motorized anything background. The Suron was my first dirt bike, if you will. Now this little pit bike, this thing is a beast. I don't know if you want to give your child this because it's too much fun. They might just send it into oblivion. Whoa, like this. Oh my God. Yeah, this is by far. I think Jason at Fumoto should sell all of his whatever else he has coming and just enjoy this guy. Oh my God. I don't care what the price point is, but it is worth it. That's for sure. Whoa. But then again, you got to have a place to ride it. Let's just take a moment to appreciate the weather and the beautiful views because I got some arm pump right now and I am exhausted, but we are having fun. I don't have a whole lot of time, so I am going to have to get back here. Let me check my time pretty soon. Like I should probably actually turn turn around here shortly but we'll do a little bit more riding and then we will call it a lunch a little a nice little lunch break now I know I said I gave up my two bike dreams because I want to save up for a van and, and that's still true but man if I had a lot of spare money right now oh my god I would be I would be on this whoo now that now that was a proper sesh that was a proper sesh and another thing, well, this isn't really an update, but I kind of wanted to ping your guys' opinion. So I sold the XXX, officially started my van savings fund. Now for vans, my budget is going to be like 10K whenever I save up 10K. I only got a little bit now. But whenever I save up like 10K, should I get a van or a truck? My, my instincts tell me to get a van, but I'm open to the idea of a truck. And if I do get a van, what vans are great in that price range that are not a Chevy Express? Don't want a little, well, I was going to say probably a word that would get flagged on YouTube. I don't want a creeper van. That's what I'll say. So I don't want like a Chevy Express, but I'm open to the idea of like a, an, an NV200, but I heard Nissan's not good. Some people say that. The Dodge Pro Masters are good. Some people say that they're not. Some people say that an old Sprinter van is good. Some people say stay so far away from Mercedes unless you want to deal with the headache. Some people say for transits. I don't know anything about vehicles, so I would love your opinion. What kind of vehicle should I get if my budget is 10K? And I still have like a year to, to decide because I'm not going to have that money for a while so let me know what you guys think in the comments uh what else can i give you guys right now nothing that nothing that i could think of i appreciate you guys coming along with me while i have lunch that was all that i have for you guys this week i appreciate you guys being here i don't know if i say that enough but i am super grateful and yeah i'll see you guys next week